Top of the morning, Irish family. Or should I say, Gia Wit. That's hello in Irish. I looked it up yesterday. The literal translation is, God be with you. So I thought that was cool the other day, and I loved it, and I want to use it. Gia Wit. What is a common response to that? Hello back. I don't know. Gia oh, Swish um, back to you? I guess so. Gia Swish. Sounds like a Swish. Welcome, so. episode two of the q and I am here with a couple of... Big time stars in Irish Connection Media Network. I'm here with Rock Egan and Quinn Giannoli, seniors, class of 2024. How are you guys? Uh, well, this morning I did an NHS project, um, so I awkwardly had to hand out signs. Okay. A lot of people said, I already have one. And then, you know, you offer them two or three or four or five, and you just keep going. These are the uh, open house signs? Yeah, yeah. Open house should show up. Should show up. Haven't picked up my sign yet. I got to put it in my in my yard. The reason I thought let's do the first sit down on Q and A with a couple of students. The reason I picked you two. You guys have already done a couple of firsts this year, whether you know it or not. We have had CHS Live in the past. You guys were anchors on it, freshman sophomore years, right? Together, uh, more, more sophomore, but more sophomore year. Sophomore yeah. was our heyday. Well, this summer, obviously, we've talked a lot about it. That. We rebranded. We are Irish Connection Media Network. That incorporates broadcasting, newspaper, websites, some yearbook stuff. It's all together. So technically, when we did our first morning announcements, which is no longer CHS Live, it is the Irish Connection Morning Show. Live, you were the two hosts to anchor that first ever show. How does that make you feel going down in the history books? Honestly, I love it. I love, uh, I love being able to make an impact on people. I love being able to set, a, set an example, whether it's in a serious matter or a joking matter. I think it was wonderful to be those first two anchors back on the morning show. I think it just felt right. You know, there's, like a, there's a certain rhythm, and there's a certain chemistry you kind of have to have on camera. And I think Rock and I have probably had that since our first day of, like, freshman football, <laughs> um, you know, when we had to run like 30 miles that is that is where we met freshman football neither one of you play football now correct uh, no. no okay i didn't <laughs> think so so we were the we were the first in irish connection morning news and then you guys did something that i think i'm saying was the first ever i could be wrong but we broadcasted the powder puff game live for the very first time and you guys were the broadcasters of that so that is another first that we chalked up how was that experience with powder puff I had a blast. I think that because like, before with the media center, we really never had the opportunity to kind of get into that <clears throat> and get like kind of you know your hands into it. But then when we got to, I mean, I love it, and I mean we're gonna do more. Obviously, I think. Yeah, I I really loved it too. I thought it was great. Um, broadcasting is something I've always had a passion for. I remember being little and playing like Madden Mobile and broadcasting the Madden game like I was important or something. Um, so <laughs> it was a it was an incredible experience. I wish we had known the rules of powder puff. That was kind of a we really were unprepared on that. I learned later that you just have four downs to score. There's no like first down or anything. It really didn't seem like like fair. Like, yeah, someone someone didn't tell me the rules or properly. So you not were my fault. you were pretty prepared for that though. I was not expecting sitting down. You had rosters. You had some notes. You did a few interviews. To me, it was just a fun way to get you guys experience, and you knocked it out of the park. The second you guys sat down with notes, I thought, my job's done. All I have to do is point the camera now. It was pretty impressive. The, the iPad. The iPad. Yeah, the iPad. Of course. Rock, yes. you are in newspaper class this year, and then obviously helping out a lot with broadcasting. Quinn, you are basically Irish Connection broadcasting class, the station manager. I just had to yell at you to get in here and record this podcast because you were telling everybody else what to do, which, again, makes my job a lot easier. But when you look at both of your roles in different classes, so far we've been in school for, what, maybe a month? Maybe not even? I don't remember when we started. A little over a month. What's this year been like so far for you in these classes and the roles that you're in? Rock, oh, we'll start with you. I, I absolutely love it. Um, prior to senior year, I had just been – uh, with the media network of Cathedral through a club basis, nothing official, I 
CHS Live used to be a club, but I love having this real opportunity to, to write. I enjoy writing. I've written maybe four articles now, working on a big one for a megaphone feature, quarter one. And I, I love it. I love writing. I love sharing with the school. So that's been an incredible experience for me. What are you writing for your first feature? Do you want to give it away or is it a surprise? I think a lot of people already know it because I'm really excited about it. We are talking about the three stooges of the religion hallway. This is Mr. Canada, Mr. Jamel, and Mr. Strife. They, they're just causing a bunch of riffraff this year and last year. I think it's, it's going to be a lot to unpack. We'll see how that goes. That, that'll be exciting. Quinn, how's the year been going, going for you? Like I said, station manager, barking out orders, having making sure everybody's going in the right spots, getting everything you need to. It's a lot of work to basically make a minute and a half news package and the amount that goes into it. So, so how's the year been for you so far? Um, honestly, I think this has been a phenomenal start. Um, we don't, I think I'm the only one that's taken broadcasting before or that's really even like pointed a camera. I think so. So, um, you know, the more and more we get comfortable with the cameras and we're realizing, oh, this is how you do it, um, and all these steps, and people are, like, all stepping up, like Johnny Lehman, um, Owen Bumbra, like, they're all stepping up in a great way. Caroline Grant is trying out recording for the first time. Everybody's, like, stepping up. So we're kind of starting slow, but then I'm hoping we're going to start, like, picking up and then we're going to have, like, four videos produced a week. Um, so I think it's been, like, a bit shaky, but I think you need to, like, rock the boat to steady it, basically. Yeah, absolutely. I think the shakier it is at the beginning, the better it is smooth sailing. Let's try to throw as yeah. many boat cliches out as we can. It is a rocky boat now for a smooth sail. And I say it as a joke. I think I've already said it three times during this podcast, but I think I've told it to every class I have. The less I am involved the better it is, because then it means you guys are jumping in. Newspaper, I mean, we can go a whole period without me saying a word. You guys just sit down, you get to work. Your book, um, I have two editors in um, Addie Bakemeyer and Julia Morell, who, again, I don't think I've told them anything, and they are just running away with it. So, And then I got, I got Quinn, and, and you're, you're killing it in broadcasting. I want to back up a second, though, to... Again, those morning news announcements, that first ever live edition. I believe it was you guys that came up to me um, and Rocky had said, I really want to do this. Quinn and I used to do it. So why was it so important that you two did that together to kick off your senior year? We'll probably have to end the year, the last episode with you two. Um, you know, why was that so important that you guys did that together um, for that first ever Irish Connection morning news? Quinn, you want to start this one? Um... Well, I think it goes back to Mrs. Ford has both of us in class. <laughs> sure. A, that's a fun class. That class is so fun, and it's pre-cal. And it's okay. not fun because of the randoms, and they're like Morgan Schmidt. Sorry, sorry, math listeners, but fun and pre-cal to me should never be used in the same sentence. But that, that's me. Go on. So I think, number one, Rock and I work great. Um, I don't know a boat reference. We're like the other halves of the Titanic when they split apart. When you put them back together, we're like the Titanic. Okay. Um, well, uh, how about like everyone rowing in unison? Maybe. This oh, that, that's uh, uh, yeah, like kayaking. We're we're a row team, um, <laughs> but or we're a crew team. Sorry. Uh, okay. I think we work <laughs> great together, and I think everybody was used to seeing us. You know, um, Saturday more or Friday mornings, we would always get congratulations. We'd get texts on Saturday of parents who've seen it. Um, saying, like, great job, you know, this was so great. And I think we put a lot of effort into it. And then, you know, last year it wasn't so live, and it was, like, hard to, like, kind of get into it. And then this year, when you have a teacher that's really passionate about it, like as much as you are, or even more, who will even rap, um, it just feels really good to put that much passion in there. Are you just grade grubbing right now? or? <laughs> uh, um, yeah, no, I agree. I think so. I think one of the uh, most important things is, is having familiar faces. Like, and I know that a lot of people around the school know Quinn and I, either from our previous endeavors on what, what was CHS Live, but having that, oh, we know them, we do have chemistry. I thought that that was an incredible thing, especially to start off the school year. Um, get back in those shoes, you know, Quinn and I are friends. What's better than listening to friends just hang out, so. Amen. I want to go back to Powder Puff now. 
I got to say, you guys did a great job. We got through it. Um, and there were some pretty awesome moments that came out of it. I got to say, we put together an Instagram clip. Nicole Mayo, who I've never met. Um, Incredible play. Her catch. I probably watched that clip 30 times between rock exploding with, oh, my gosh, she caught it. And I think it was Quinn yelling, Nicole Mayo. Um, I think that that clip had the most shares, probably the most likes on our Instagram so far. So that was an awesome moment. But the goal is more live broadcasts. And we'll talk about it a little bit later, but the reason I wanted you two on again was another first this year is September 27th, basically seven days next week, uh, girls volleyball versus Carmel High School. You guys will be broadcasting the game live, and Powder Puff was just a little test to see how you guys would do. What did you learn coming out of that Powder Puff game broadcasting something live? In all honesty, I learned that I needed more notes. I mean, <laughs> we did a little little pregame show before the Powder Puff game, and I used half my notes, and I was like, ah. Uh. <laughs> What do I say now? <laughs> there was a time where we were just relying off of, oh, I know them from class. I'm going to throw something out random that I know about them. They'll all be like, yeah, that's uh, whoever I have English class with them. <laughs> we did our ninth grade English project together, and we got a B plus because they didn't do the annotations right. <laughs> well, I think that's, I mean, yes, it's, I think one of my biggest phrases I say to my journalism class is it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. You interview for 30 minutes and you use five minutes of it. That's better than the opposite way. But it's also what Rocket said earlier about having that history with people. People know who you are. You know who they are. So you're able to call back onto that stuff when you have nothing else to say. And then you throw in, Rock, you'd mention Wow, are we ever going to get breaks? Like, there was no breaks. It was, what, 45 minutes, yeah. minutes maybe of just go for it, guys. And I threw you into the deep end. I didn't give you any notes on anything. The fact you showed up with notes, I was surprised. So it, it was good practice, but, yeah, you guys, you guys killed it. You did a great job for me basically saying, yeah, you got it. Go for it. I think you did good. Yeah, I think a commercial somewhere in there would have helped. <laughs> um, yeah, if, if there's any, ooh, we promote the coffee house in the middle of the volleyball game. We yeah. got um, got an email going out later today, uh, asking any clubs, any organizations, basically send us flyers, um, graphics, right? And my hope is give you guys a quick 30 second break. I throw up a coffee house flyer. We mute you so you can take a drink, you can take a breath. <laughs> um, yeah. It's not going to be like Powder Puff. Powder Puff was 43 minutes, I believe 43 minutes, of you two just talking. Like I said, it was, it was impressive, and it was enjoyable to watch. I want to dive into you guys, because outside of everything, this is a get-to-know-you podcast. I could sit here and talk Irish Connection all day. But you two as individuals. So, Rock, well, you're both graduating this year. But, Rock, what are, what are future plans? Because I don't know how serious or half serious you were um, is college in the plan? Is going right to the workforce in the plan? Where will you be September 20th, 2024? Wow. So you mentioned that we're both graduating. We both hope to graduate. I hope. I, I think I have the credits. I don't know about I you. I say this very nicely. Not I true. hope you two aren't here next year. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I never want to shut any doors for options in my life. Um, currently, I'm thinking about going straight into the workforce. I interned with a mortgage company over the summer, and mm -hmm. I think that that is the line of work I want to get into, do mortgages for people, help them buy houses. People always need to buy houses. Um, my kind of backup plan at the moment is to go to college, if that doesn't work, and become a teacher. I love instructing and teaching, and I think I'd be all right at it. Um, but there's some obvious downsides to both of those. Of course. And a With backup, everything. backup, backup plan. <laughs> One of my passions is cooking. And so culinary school is also in the runnings. But as far as where I see myself September 2024, I'll, I think I'll be doing mortgages. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you said it at the beginning, keep doors open and. What are you, 18, 17? 18. You're a young guy. You got time. Figure it all out. <laughs> um, a note on the cooking. Rock will come in with the most immaculate lunches. 
like the most beautiful Italian sandwiches, and I'm sitting here with like a ham, like a sad ham and cheese wrap. It's like act like I feel like depressed when I look at this food. Like there's banana peppers on. Did it. you did you make your ham and cheese wrap? I mean, yeah, there okay. wasn't love put into it. Okay, but, I mean it's there. Yeah, now I got like four different types of Italian meats on a brioche burnt bun with Kalamata olives and. I mean, I'm getting hungry now. What is what's your go-to meal if somebody said I need you to cook me a meal? What do you make? Uh, pasta. Okay. I I work at a Italian restaurant, and I I mean it's Italian. We'll call it Italian. Um, Puccini's pizza and pasta. <sighs> that is. <laughs> you can call it whatever you want. I call it fantastic. Um, I'll probably get that tonight now that you talked me into it. And you didn't you didn't <laughs> talk me into it. You just mentioned it. Quinn, you've got um, from what I know a list of colleges. We got Wabash, DePaul, St. John's, Colgate. Um, any other on that list? Where do you rank those? Why those colleges? Where will you be next year? So I really like Wabash. I like DePaul. I want to go to a small school. I want to like go somewhere where I feel like I matter, if that makes any sense. Like okay. I want to be able to do what I've done here, where I have an impact, where I can like help make a student stay better. Awesome. Um, but uh, I'm thinking about a gap year. I'm still contemplating that. I love hiking, so it's like... Mm -hmm being like a forest firefighter. It doesn't sound like the dream at some points, but it also kind of does uh, bettering something. Before I got into teaching, I left Fox 59 and I decided I was gonna become a firefighter. And I went to the class. Um, I went and watched the training because I wasn't prepared mentally to train for it. And then I never went back when I saw the things that they had to do <laughs> and I had to realize how claustrophobic I am and how much of a fear I have of everything. So. That's pretty awesome. That would be a cool gap year. Yeah, and that'd be a great thing to like brag about. <laughs> it <laughs> would. I just went straight here. I was like, oh yeah, I was in like, Syria. like I was in Nevada, just putting out force yeah, fires. Sorry, I'm late, guys. I was a little busy over the past year. <laughs> great, great documentary on CBS. It's called Fire Country, and I'm only kidding. It's not a documentary. It's a TV show, but it's really, really good. The character, main character of that show, his name is Bodie. I saw that, and I said, that's my son's name few months later my son was born his name is Bodie fun fact you both kind of mentioned when you leave because I asked you to when it's all said and done and Quinn you kind of mentioned helping somebody if you're remembered Jim Irsay I think said it horribly the other day a couple weeks ago about Jonathan Taylor he said when I'm dead and Jonathan Taylor's gone nobody will remember who we are just a great outlook on life Mr. Irsay yeah, but you when that. you guys are out of here in what like eight short months what would you want to be remembered for at your time for your time at cathedral? Um, I want to be the guy who wait, why isn't he opening up the assembly anymore? Like I, w <laughs> I want people to like miss me like, oh my gosh, he was so great. <laughs> you know <laughs> I love it. You uh, bring energy to that. you do. Yeah. You bring an energy to everything I've seen you do. Um, but I think most of all, I just want I just want people to like glean from me, just do like little things really with a lot of effort or like you know just be kind and be happy like let somebody go in the parking lot yes please let a car go <laughs> like, it's not that deep. small yeah. acts of kindness right uh, that's what that's what i want people to take from me when i'm gone if that makes any sense from school i don't and <laughs> i'm being gone <laughs> right. Um, right yeah after when that. i die after graduation <laughs> i hope people remember like no. I said, you're young long life ahead of you <laughs> i i agree with that quinn you know I want to be able to have an impact on the people here at Cathedral, on the people I encounter in my future endeavors. And whether those are big impacts or small impacts, I think that's incredible. And one of my life goals is to save someone's life. Should I mean, become a life in any aspect. Um, so it's actually funny because I thought about this. Like, this has been my life goal for the past eight years. And then I realized that I've already done this because. I saved my brother from choking one time. And <laughs> I was like, oh. You made a goal at 10 years old to, yeah, save, to save somebody's, somebody's life. life. That's impressive. I, I think thought, like, 10 I just, years old, I was pretending to be the green Power Ranger walking around my school. You were um, you were the green one? I had the green coin. I kept it in my pocket. Um, <laughs> every single yeah, one that was the, the green, green one. one. Not the red one. Yeah, I was going to say the purple. Yeah. You guys just, you don't understand the Power Rangers um, from... 2002, I don't know. Yeah, it would make sense that no, I wouldn't that would understand. Be, that would be 1998. I wasn't 13. Yeah, I was negative 5. So, so saving somebody, saving that's impressive. Life. 
yeah, I thought it'd be really cool to like say I I've saved someone's life, and then I gave my brother the Heimlich, and I was like, well, one goal down. <laughs> What's next? When yeah. uh, when did you do that? When you were ten? No, I was like maybe twelve. Okay. My oldest brother is autistic, and he was choking on a piece of meat, and that's impressive. And then, like, and then I, he wasn't. I like how I said when you were ten, and you kind of shrugged it off, like, "No, I was 12. Are like, that's, me? Are you kidding me? I, that's different. It's not like seventeen and ten is different, but ten and twelve is that's impressive. Probably the red power ranger now. Me? Yeah. Yeah. I'd say that the green was probably. I'm actually more of a Paw Patrol guy, in all honesty. I, I did grow up on that. My, I have a little sister. So like. <laughs> I bought Paw Patrol kids for or toys for my oldest daughter when she was about two and she was potty training because she was watching the show a lot and I thought they were the coolest little toys. I got each dog and every time she went to the bathroom I was going to give her a dog and she hated them more than anything in the world. So <laughs> that was my... I use this as an opportunity, obviously, for the listeners and watchers to continue to get to know me because I keep saying if I have a Get to Know You podcast and they don't know me, I don't think they, they connect to it. So I'm going to tell you a story, my favorite, one of my favorite childhood memories. And as I'm doing that, I want you to think about yours, okay? And then you're going to share yours. But don't think about it and then just ignore me because that's just, that's rude. <laughs> I was 11 years old. It was June 1999. Were you giving the Heimlich maneuver? I was not. I was 11, not even thinking about that. I think I had just put my green ranger power coin down <laughs> because we were going to illinois we went to six flags great america and brand new coaster was built in may of 1999 it was called raging bull it was i think it's only like over 200 feet it's not one of the tallest ones ever but i'd ridden roller coasters that were small and my dad and i he's a he's a a very strict guy in terms of he just wanted what was best for me but he also wouldn't let me get out of hand or act a fool um and so if i were to ever say a curse word in front of him it was like soap in the mouth that was a thing back then um you know he kept me on the right track so i'll never forget we're at six flags and i look up at this roller coaster i'm like there's absolutely no way i'm 11 years old i'm terrified of heights i'm not going to do it and my dad he kind of convinced me to get on and so i'm sitting there on the very end my dad's in the middle and then my oldest brother michael and I'm 11, and my dad looks at me, and he could tell I was scared, and he said, if you have to say a curse word, I will be okay with it. <laughs> and I'm like, this is not okay. He's going <laughs> to... So we're going up the hill, and I said, it, it was, at that time, taller than anything I'd ever been on. And the point where you get over the hill, and you're not yet falling, but you can see this is going to be terrifying, before the drop even... I scream at the top of my lungs, oh, <laughs> and I let it out, <laughs> and then we go, and I'm screaming, I don't, I don't curse again, but I'm, I'm saying all the other scream words, yeah, and you know, whatever, and then we, we pull into the station at the end, my dad looks at me, he's like, are you okay, and I said, yeah, that was fun, and he looks at me really sternly, and he says, I heard what you said, and I was terrified for a second. <laughs> and he like hit my leg and he was like, I'm just kidding. That was, that was funny. And in that moment, I kind of realized like, all right, he's a strict guy and he keeps me in line. But that was a really cool moment um, for me to just kind of like one of the first times I remember seeing my dad as like a friend and a, and a buddy and a jokester. And, and so that, that's one of my absolute favorite moments. So hopefully you heard it, you didn't ignore me. What is yours? Who wants to go first? Can you say that again? No. The whole story. <laughs> I was 11 years old. <laughs> I'll, I'll take this one. Um, first off, you didn't just, like, let the curse words rip the entire one. Like, you said I can say them the whole time, Dad. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> That's how terrified I was to even let this one slip out. Um, so, growing up, we traveled a ton. Um, I played chess. I'm a nerd. And my older brother, Max, also played chess way better than I did. Um, he actually represented the state of Indiana as an eighth grader in like the National Youth Chess Championship in Wisconsin. He was like the best eighth grader in the state of Indiana. And so the farthest that we ever traveled was to Vegas. There was this big national chess tournament in Vegas. We went to national chess tournaments all over the place. I went to my first one when I was four. 
I don't even know why. Dad took me to a chess tournament when I was four in Dallas, Texas. Um, it was a long drive. Got tons of driving time. Got lots of miles on that on that suburban. Rest in peace. <laughs> um, so we're in Vegas, and this tournament starts on the 26th of December. And so we go out to Vegas, leave, I don't know, probably whenever my mom gets out of teaching. And we make all these stops at, like, the Grand Canyon and the Petrified Forest and all these wonderful landmarks. Get to the hotel on, like, Christmas Eve in Vegas. And we're all like, well, we're in Vegas. This is our present. My dad packed Christmas presents in, like, suitcases that were sitting just feet behind us the entire car ride. And we didn't notice (laughs) until, like, we get home from church on Sunday and just this table in this presidential suite that we got is just full of presents. And we're like, did you just buy these last night? <laughs> like, <laughs> where are these from? Um, you know, I was like nine, so there were a lot of Lego sets, which didn't make it home, mm-hmm. which was sad. Mm-hmm. But that was an incredible surprise and probably one of my favorite memories. That's really cool. That I don't know why the Home Alone 2 ending jumped into my head when, oh, yeah. when all <laughs> the presents are out in that room. Uh-huh. Quinn. Um... So mine was actually like pretty recent. Um, so this past summer, I family in Minnesota. Like yeah, we seven. still are children, just so you know. of course. <laughs> I, mean, I know. You're, well, you're eighteen. I'm I seventeen. Am, I'm an adult. I'm thirty-five, still a child. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't know how many people know this. When you get to Minnesota, that entire like arc over the Great Lakes, it's just all state parks. Like it's barely even like that uh except for like the loose there's nothing huge there okay. like i'm talking it looks like a 1950s movie sure um so there's two spots that i have like specific memories of like my dad is like the best i was like oh there's a national mon- monument right there we're going probably like 60 on a state highway he slams on his brakes <laughs> gets on the shoulder he's like we're going i was like are you, do you have like severe 80, like, are you a child? <laughs> He's like, I see the ocean, we're go. I was like, yeah, that's a great lake. <laughs> but yeah, you're doing your best. Um, so I actually ended up swimming um, in Lake Superior. Um, it was a solid, I think 40 degrees. Uh, that sucked. Um, but it was like awesome just like being with my dad and having that experience. And then we go further up and we hit Gooseberry Falls. Gorgeous. Um, I don't know how to put it. It's like a bunch of waterfalls okay. that just keep going. Like, it shouldn't be a state park. It's really, I'm, like, if you're ever going to be in the northeast side of Minnesota. It's like a TLC, don't go chasing waterfalls. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you know that reference, or am I too old for that? Uh, you're old. Okay, yeah, very, fair very enough. Old. I'm just laughing to make you feel good. I appreciate right you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's okay. Um, but we, so there's a sign that says no swimming. I had no clue. But my dad is a wimp. Um, I'm sorry, Dad, if you're listening to this, but he's a bit of a wimp. <laughs> um, and there's this cliff. And I was just like, Dad, I'm going to jump off it. He's like, what? I was like, oh, there's water. And I'm, so I'm a lifeguard. I'm really good with water, uh, open water, certified, whatever. So I'm like, I know it's deep enough. Some dude that looks like a hippie with the smallest calves I've ever seen. Okay, that's <laughs> told, important. <laughs> told me, hey, it's too shallow there. I'm like, no, you're wrong. I mean, he, don't trust anybody with small calves. Okay. <laughs> no. That's just a rule of thumb. Uh, my next question is life advice, but you got that out of the way, so <laughs> go ahead. Um, so I ended up jumping off. My other brother went and jumped off, and we were completely fine. But my dad was like, you guys are idiots. And he was, I was like, are you going to do it? He's like, no, but it was really fun watching you guys. And, like, I love being with you guys. This is so awesome. And he's always kind of, like, stoic, think things through, um, very Italian family. So think, like, an Italian father, not mm-hmm. Tony Soprano. It's not that bad, <laughs> but... Um, it was just awesome getting to see, like, it's nice now when you see people being more human mm-hmm. instead of being authority figures as you get older. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's certainly a change to go from, like, oh, you're just my dad to now, oh, like, we actually just hang out together. Like, we're like yeah. it's, a, it's a cool transition. My dad never dapped me up, though. I'm waiting for the day that he would, like, dap me up. He, my dad tries. That's really <laughs> sweet. <laughs> I saw a talk show host do this once, and with a famous news anchor and it was about television journalists and how no matter how ridiculous the story is it is important to relay that information with professionalism with a seriousness and i thought that is no better test right now for youtube really for the three of us um is to do this 
did this you, was did you say seriousness a seriousness i would call it chronos i did <laughs> a gravitas which actually means seriousness i believe so we're going to put up some ridiculous news headlines we're going to look into the cameras and we have to read them with a seriousness behind our tone can't smile can't laugh i'll tell you i worked at fox 59 and some of these stories that went through that in the back the behind the scenes editor or directors producers are all talking on the microphones of how is scott saying this how is jenny saying this because the things that happen in our world can be a little ridiculous so here's the test it's you guys got your prompter there i got the computer we're going to look into the camera you're going to read it and you got to do it with a straight face no smiling no laughing um and for those that are just watching and listening this isn't a competition Okay, it's not a competition, but it is. It is. please feel free to email me who you believe the winner was. So, so it is a competition. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go first. And now that this is actually live, I know what they are. These two have no idea what they have to say. You have a little advantage here. A hundred percent an advantage. <clears throat> we're, we're not up on our screen here. It's okay. I was going to say, well, what am I supposed to read there? <laughs> Nothing yet. You're over, up, oh, right there. I just spilled water down, on myself. Right there, there we go. Right, so you guys see your screen, I see mine. All right. If you have ever sat down on something wet and you are not entirely sure how it got that way, we have a very chilling report coming up. I have a notoriously bad poker face. All right. So there's mine. So, Rock, you're going to be up first. With your first, and, and freely take a minute, read it over to yourself, get a giggle out, and then you can let it go. Thirteen monkeys escaped from the zoo and broke into 81-year-old Wilma Jean's house. After shaving her head, they got to know each other with tea and banana pudding. That's impressive. <laughs> That's an impressive one. Oh, wait. Okay. <clears throat> Tonight, a shocking reveal. In the case of Scott and the 15-foot coyote that wanted nothing more than a head scratch and a peanut butter cup. <laughs> Later tonight. <laughs> All right, I got the right guys here. <laughs> That's so funny. <clears throat> <clears throat> Thank goodness that seconds before destruction, the Kona ice worker was able to save the llama from falling into a frozen pit of tiger's blood snow cones. Coming up at 11. I actually don't really like Kona Ice. I'm a big fan of Kona Ice. Really? It's just ice. Big E, Dope, Lil Fresh Time, and Mother, How's It Be were dropping mad beats at the house party before tragedy struck. Oh, that Mr. One. Q is a rapper himself. That was <laughs> impressive. I told you earlier, I, there was one I couldn't get through without smiling, and that was it. Mother, how's it be is my <laughs> yeah. favorite part. I hate that I get this one. Sorry. Yeah, we're, we're too this, old. This makes me feel old. <laughs> we invited Mr. Rogers to respond to these accusations, but unfortunately, it was not a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. I surely hope people send us ridiculous stories because you guys are killing it. <sighs> Gave myself a long one. Meant to give this one to Rock. Oh, boy. <laughs> Betty Botter bought some butter. But, she said, this butter's bitter. If I bake this bitter butter, it will make my batter bitter. But a bit of better butter, that would make my batter better. So, she bought a bit of better butter. Better than her bitter butter. And she baked it in her batter, and the batter was not bitter. So, twas better Betty Botter bought a bit of better butter. That was impressive. That, that, was, <laughs> that was good. That was four years of Ball State teaching us unique New York, unique New York, red leather, yellow leather. But if you thought that was fun. Just so you know, this is part one, and Quinn will finish with part two. Oh, my gosh. What? I am horrible at these. <laughs> a tree toad loved 
a she-toad who lived up in a tree. He was a two-toed tree toad, but a three-toed toad was she. The two-toed tree toad tied, tried to win the three-toed she-toad's heart. For the two-toed tree toad loved the ground that the, tr- the three-toed tree toad trod. But the two-toed tree toad tried in vain. He couldn't please her when. From her tree toad bower, with her three-toed power, the she toad vetoed him. Why did? Why is that? A <laughs> thing? That's that doesn't make sense. That's <laughs> a thing. That's a thing. We're gonna get interrupted by the bell real quick. I appreciate you guys coming on. That was very impressive. Now I know, you know, don't start going and like slipping in funny sayings <laughs> during live news like people do. Um, we didn't talk much about it, but September twenty seventh, uh, sixteen six fifteen p.m. That's next Wednesday. Broadcasting the volleyball game live. The girls play Carmel High School. Hopefully the students and the staff pack the, the Welch Activity Center, but if they don't, now they have a way of tuning in. You got 15 seconds followed by 15 seconds. Why should people watch? Why should people watch? Because it is an opportunity not just to support the school, but our new media program. This is something that we need all the support we can get. So tune in. Quinn and I are going to do an incredible job. Our volley t- volleyball team, sorry, the toad thing got me mixed up, is <laughs> insane. <laughs> The volleyball team is so good, and us two will be there, and you love us, because how could you not love us? So come watch it. Yeah, there might be a two-toed tree-toed there as well. Awesome. And remember, that wasn't a competition. Email me who you thought was the best, the winner. Maybe later this year we get you guys back on um, podcast as you're close to graduating. Um, but I appreciate you coming on. First ever Powder Puff Live. First ever Irish Connection Morning News. First ever student guests on the Q&A podcast. Um, Boy, this is embarrassing. I don't know how to say goodbye in Irish or ir- Irish. So don't they speak English in Irish? Yeah, I thought they did. <laughs> <sighs> I don't know. You know, why do uh, why do Irish people always have leftovers? Oh god. They're always doubling the recipe. <laughs> this is, this is constant. This is all of the time. I have a list of d- or a stack of cards, dad jokes in my room. I love them nothing more. That is the perfect way to end rock. Thank you for that. I'm glad we planned out that joke it's to end this. The time. Goodbye and thank you for listening. Irish Connection Q&A. A different guest, different story every day. Coming at you from the unified media, adding stories to the encyclopedia. Have you ever done anything incredible? Got a recipe that's delicious and edible. Want to talk about diversity and unity? Come and tell it to the cathedral community. Train all year for a 5K race? Show a horse and take first place? Q and a coach, Q and a teacher, Q and a priest or a sister or a preacher. Students and teachers, but there's so much more to that. We got musicians, robotics, a quarterback. Did you teach someone? Did you learn a lesson? Senior, junior, sophomore, freshman. This theme has lost all sanity. Let's meet a member of the Irish family. I've got nothing else to say, so let's just start. Pow, pow, pow.